Hi, welcome to my presentation of my final project. Um, for my final uh, project, my game, um, I decided to create a game that would allow you to feed little fish to sharks. Um, so basically what I have is I have a game where the sharks jump out of the water, um, they're kind of angry because they're hungry, and you very, very quickly um, fling a fish into their mouth um, to make them happy um, and to make them go away. Um, let me go ahead, I'm going to start by demoing the game and then I'll talk about um, what I did to create this. So I'm just going to start it. So the basic game looks like this. Um, basically what happens is you, uh, you feed the sharks and you do that. Um, you can see I have a slingshot down at the bottom of the screen and by using the left and right arrows on my keyboard um, I can move the slingshot and the attached fish um, back and forth across the screen. Um, when I find a shark um, you can see the sharks just sort of jump out of the water. Um, what I do is I press enter on the keyboard and that will throw um, a fishy at the shark. Um, you can see that um, as I throw the fish, um, if they intersect with a shark, um, there's a counter in the top right hand corner that increments to indicate that the shark has been successfully fed. Um, you can also see that um, the shark actually uh, gets a smile because it is now a content and happy shark. Um, and then there is a noise that indicates that the shark has been successfully fed. Um, there is a timer on this program. Um, what happens is every uh, 50,000 milliseconds, um, it adds another shark. So it starts with one shark, um, and then obviously it adds two, and then three, and what have you. Um, and they sort of just keep jumping up and down. And as you can see, I've started missing sharks. And um, the counter at the top, um, rather than just counting how many sharks, there's actually little X's. And um, basically, you can play this game until such time as you miss three sharks. When you miss three sharks, um, the game is over, and um, it will um, start an end game sequence. And right there, I just missed my third shark. So you can see when the game ends, um, it takes away your fish and your slingshot. You can no longer play. Um, it tells you game is over. And, um, and then you get devoured by a shark because really that's exactly what can happen, should happen. Um, at the top right hand corner you can see that I can still see my score. Um, I successfully managed to feed um, 29 sharks before messing up. Um, the current record is 52. Um, there you go. Alright, um, so that's what the game looks like. Um, if I go ahead and take a look at my code, um, first of all, I should mention, you can see that I have some sort of an error. Um, it's not like the regular kind of error you get when your code doesn't work. Um, it is something that showed up when I start, when I put in the sound effect. Um, I asked one of my friends if they had any idea what it meant, and they didn't because they hadn't used processing. Um, it doesn't seem to be affecting anything. The code is still working. Um, it's basically looking for an image, um, and there are no actual images in the in the uh, program. Um, all the artwork is stuff that I've drawn. So I'm a little bit confused about as to what it's doing. Again, everything works, so it hasn't been a problem. So I've just sort of been ignoring it. But if you have any idea of what it is, I would love to know. All right, so um, let's take a look at our classes. Um, you can see that in addition to the main game, um, I have four classes. Um, we'll start with uh, sort of the less complicated ones and work our way up. Um, so the first class I have is I have a timer class. Um, this class um, was pretty much, um, I used most of the code from the rain catcher game that we did in class, and I just sort of edited that for my use. Um, and basically what it does is it runs, and every 50,000 milliseconds it adds another shark. So I have an array of sharks, I think there are 10 in the actual array, and uh, a different one shows up. I don't think anyone's gotten further than like three or four sharks. Um, the second class that I have is I have a slingshot class. Um, basically, this is that little brown slingshot bow kind of thing at the bottom of the screen. Um, what this class does um, is it basically obviously draws the slingshot on the, the page. Um, it allows me to move it back and forth um, and make sure, so left and right using the, let me end up using the arrow keys, um, and it makes sure that it doesn't fall off on either the left or the right hand of the side of the screen. Um, the next class I want to talk about is the fishy class. Um, as you would expect, the fishy class draws the fish. Um, it has them, it allows them to move across the screen um, with the use of left and right arrows. That's actually set up in the main program, but 
their motion is left and right across the screen. Um, so they move with the slingshot until such time as you press enter and then um, the fish sort of go off on their own. You know, they, um, the, uh, the fish's Y value uh, decreases to move it up the screen. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later because that was something that was kind of interesting as I was figuring out how to do this. Um, the, with regard to the fish, um, they are uh, one-time use fish. Um, basically, I have an array of something like 10,000 of them. And um, they basically, when they get thrown, they, you know, obviously move up the screen and they keep going. Um, if they actually get eaten, um, what the program does is it moves them to um, an X location um, that is sort of just off the side of the screen. So basically, there's a little fishy graveyard um, off in a place that you can't quite see. Um, all right, the other one, and the one that's probably the most complicated of all my classes, is the shark class. Uh, the shark class has a lot of things going on. Um, obviously, it draws the sharks, um, so it, it takes care of my, my basic um, shark drawing needs. Um, it makes them jump. Um, you can see I have a jump class, um, so basically they move, um, you know, they move up the screen and then back down. Um, it performs the hit tests as to whether or not um, an individual shark um, has actually um, encountered a fish. Um, and more importantly, um, so when I first started making the program and I first got it, the hit test working, uh, you could feed sharks sort of as many fish as you could get into their mouths before they disappeared from the screen. Um, what I've done is I've made it so that each shark can only actually eat one fish. Um, and basically, once it's um, once it has eaten a fish, um, there's various things to keep track of the fact that it has been fed. Um, obviously, um, I uh, drew the ellipse um, on top of it to um, you know to close its mouth, and then there's a little arc to give it a smiley face, um, and it makes the munching noise. Um, but more importantly than that, um, there's some sort of boolean. Uh, stuff that it deals with um, to indicate that that individual shark has been fed. Um, and the reason for that is later on in the game, um, the way the game ends, obviously, is that if you've eaten, uh, if you've failed to feed three sharks, the game ends. So it's really important to know whether each individual shark um, has been fed. Um, unlike the fish, the shark are actually being recycled. So at the end of um, each jump, if I sort of scroll up to this section, um, what it does is it reassigns the um, shark to a random X coordinate and the shark um, begins its jump again. So you can see I've got this uh, fed boolean that I'm toggling on and off um, so that I can say yes it's been fed and then I can send it to a new spot and say okay now it's a you know pretend I haven't fed this shark yet. Um, all right let me just check my notes and see if there's anything else I should tell you about the sharks. I think that's most of the shark stuff. So let's take a look at the main program and I'll show you how I put some of this stuff together. Um, you can see I've got a whole lot of things going on. As you can see, I've got 10 sharks. Um, I used a variable for the total number of fish and I'll talk about why after. Um, I wanted fish to be, I wanted fish to be an unlimited resource um, if you're, you know, so you, you could feel like you could rapid fire them. Um, so there are 10,000 of them. Um, as I scroll down, you can see, let's, as we talk about this program, you know, obviously I'm setting everything up. Um, I recycled my clouds from my first assignment um, so that I could, um, you know, sort of have some effect going on. Um, the, the big thing with this game is that the main action is going on inside um, an if statement. So you can see, you know, if Angry Sharks is less than three, you can play the game. Um, so what it's doing is it is keeping track of um, how many sharks haven't been fed um, and it increments um, a little counter for that and once you've reached the point that there are three sharks that haven't been fed it ends the game. Um, I didn't, you know, I, it's very easy obviously for me to just keep a count of that but with regard to the display, um, I didn't just want like number of unfed sharks, I really wanted to do little X's and turn them red as you missed. Um, so if I scroll down to the scroll bar section, um, you can see I have a variable for this, the angry sharks. And um, what I'm doing is I'm saying, 
if it's greater than one, you turn the first X red. If it's greater than, you know, two, you turn the second X red. Um, so that visually that display was a little bit more interesting and it wasn't as confusing. I didn't like the idea of there being two numbers displayed on the screen. Um, okay, so after the third shark is unfed, um, it plays the end sequence. Um, I was determined I was going to make scale work. I got it to, to work. Um, so I've used it, I've used it successfully this semester, so I'm pleased with myself on that. Um, and obviously it plays the end thing and it makes it so you can no longer, you know, the catapult goes away, it makes it so you can no longer throw fish. Um, all right, so, um, I had two major issues as I was working on this project. Um, interestingly enough, both of them had to do with the fish. Um, the first one was making sure that the fish didn't move, um, did not move with the catapult once it was thrown. Um, so if I scroll back down, you can see I have the key pressed um, that, that deals with the actual moving of the catapult and the throwing of the fish. Um, and what was happening was I would throw the fish, but it would still be tied to the uh, X of the catapult. So as I moved the catapult, the fish would go with it, which really wasn't working. Um, so what I ended up doing was I created a variable um, to record the current fish, and then I incremented it once the fish was thrown. So you can see I have a loop here, um, and it's using um, something called my uh, fish number. Um, and what happens is um, the loop allows the fish to move back and forth to the slingshot, but it's only looping the fish that have not yet been thrown. So if a fish has been thrown, it's no longer part of that loop. So that was how I solved my first problem. And my other problem, and this was the bigger one, um, was that, um, again, I wanted fish to be on an unlimited resource, so I ended up making a lot of them. Um, and I saw a crazy performance hit um, from that. And it was interesting because when we showed um, games last week in class, um, somebody had that with the Mario game. And I had assumed it was because they were using uh, images, which was one of the reasons that I wanted to use sort of drawn art. Um, and it turns out that you, if you have 10,000 of something, it just will create a performance hit. Um, so if I can find it in here, um, where is it? Um, right here, with my fish display, this probably is not the best solution, um, but this worked. Um, so what I did um, was I made it so that rather than displaying all the fish, I'm only displaying 100 fish at a time. Um, Obviously, the first hundred fish, if you're doing that, become a little bit weird. So I had to do a little bit of like creative fiddling. You can see I've got some notes on what I did for the first hundred fish. Um, but after that, I basically have a for loop, and it knows where you are with regard to what fish you're on, and it's showing you only like the hundred fish right where you are, and then it stops displaying them. Um, and that uh, basically successfully dealt with um, my performance issues. Um, so there you have it. Um, I did play with some different things. I tried upping the speed of the sharks. I found that if they were anything faster than two, the game was just impossible. Uh, my mother played, and she was only able to feed two sharks, um, but my cousins were fighting it out for high score, and uh, 52 was the high score recorded over Thanksgiving. Um, so there you have it. Um, hopefully this works. If you have any questions, feel free to, um, to ask them, and I will get this uploaded along with the code. Thank you.